that was kind of my first like jump into the community, the okay. fitness community in a, in a way, because I started really in it in college and I was away in Northern Kentucky. You know, I was working out at my uh, rec center gym, come home, went back to the Y Southeast. And that was kind of like as deep as I got into it really. Okay. And, you know, getting back into, you know, when we moved down to the Highlands, kind of got into more of like Louisville stuff. And that was kind of my first really touch of the fitness community here in Louisville. And then, you know, once I got out of that, um, got back into just kind of working out the Y again. And then COVID hit. And then the podcast started. <laughs> and that's really when I kind of got back into things here in Louisville. It took me a little while, though, you know, about a year um, talking to people from way far away. And it, it finally kind of brought it back home, though. Yeah, I've been in and out of the fitness world, I guess, in Louisville for, I mean, for a few years. I originally started, I had really bad gym intimidation when I first started uh, working out. And back in high school, I ran cross country, played softball, ran track. So going from those like mainly cardio workouts and training to weightlifting was really odd to me, or I felt very intimidated, like to go out on the weight floor. Um, I actually remember my brother could not drive yet and so I would make him go to the gym with me I'd be like I'll be your ride if you like just be in the same area as me it's like you don't even have to like acknowledge me but just be there in case I need your help um so that kind of sparked that and I decided I wanted to train for a Tough Mudder um so that sparked my weightlifting kind of journey um and then I lost at the time and this was probably I'm 23 now it was probably when I was 20 so about three years ago um, I lost like 30 pounds just to actually my best friend's birthday was coming up and there was a dress I wanted to fit into. And I was like, I'm not going to go up in size. I'm just going to like get back into shape. So that sparked it then. Um, and then shortly after that, I started training at nine round as a trainer. Um, I worked out there first and I was like, this is something cool. Like I want to do this. Um, and then took a break from that, from training um, then got into F45. I don't know if you've heard of it. Yeah. I'm it's not over, sure really what it is, but I've heard of it. So it's functional training. Okay. Um, so it's like a 45 minute class and I was coaching those classes. Hmm. It alternates between cardio and weight training every other day. Gotcha. Um, so I was coaching that. I still sub there, but now I have to work full time as a nurse. So, um, between bodybuilding and full time work, I don't get to go coach there as much as I would like to. Yeah. It doesn't feel like you're kind of like searching for, you know, your, your true fitness passion or have you found it maybe in bodybuilding or are you just still kind of trying things out? Um, I definitely have to say, I think I found it in bodybuilding, which I did not think I was going to. Um, I've always been one to try like every sport known to man is what my mom likes to say. Um, in high school, I even tried pole vaulting. <laughs> so I definitely have tried like everything. Um, but bodybuilding, like I fell in love with it. I did not think I would. Um, but definitely after that first show, I was like, yep, I'm sticking with this. Like, this is something I want to continue to do and to make a lifestyle. Gotcha. And how'd you get into it really? I mean, so my brother's best friend's dad has been on me for four years now. He was like, you need to compete. You'd kill it. You need to get out there. Like you're athletic. You can do this. And I'm like, no, let me do it after nursing school. Like, that was just always my excuse to just not do it. Because I'm like, I'm not getting up there. I don't want that spray tan. Like, I don't want to go up there. Um, And then, I guess, COVID hit. And just a bunch of different stressors between school, moving out, a bad relationship. I had gained a bunch of weight. And I was like, you know what? I'm finally going to do something about it. So I started reaching out to coaches. Um, I know Melanie, who's been on here before I've been friends with her since high school. So I reached out to her and I was like, Melanie, I need to know like how to get into this. So she kind of helped me, which is how I got in touch with Austin Brown, which was my coach for my first show. And together he helped me lose, I want to say 65 pounds total. Um, and I started back in, I guess the end of September, early October last year. And so I kind of, I went to him and I was like, Hey, like I want to end up competing. Um, let's do this. And he was like, well, if you want to compete come spring, like we got to start now. Yeah. So I went for it. It's pretty cool. And, uh, I mean, that's definitely like setting that kind of goal where you're 
going to get on stage, you know, reveal yourself. When you're not as comfortable with yourself as you want to be, looking out into the future and thinking, you know, I'm going to have to get up there. You know, how how did you feel about that really? Um, I was probably I don't want to say stressed. Um, I was really proud of myself in the beginning of it because the show wasn't super close. So as I noticed myself like losing weight and becoming more confident in myself and really finding myself again and becoming happy with myself again, um, it was great. Now, probably about a month out from show, I was probably blowing Austin's phone up being like, I don't think I'm ready to get there. I don't think I should do this. Like, so it definitely during prep, it was a huge more or it was more so a mental struggle for me than being tired and physically just not wanting to go to the gym that didn't have a problem with that it was more so like am I ready to get on stage some fear and well anxiety and I made the mistake of really comparing myself to like Olympia pros and people that have been in the sport for a while um so that was my biggest problem I actually had to take a break from social media probably for the last few weeks of prep just because I was like, I was comparing myself and talking myself out of my show. Right. Yeah. It's, it's definitely like today, today's day and age with social media. I can imagine how hard that would be um, because you can literally follow along with somebody exactly like every step of the way that they're doing and comparing yourself. I feel like would just be so easy to do, you know, and questioning whether, you know, because you can probably see exactly kind of what they're eating, you know, when they're training, how much they're training. And you might think, they look great. Why am I not doing it like them? Or, you know, things like that, you know, questioning your coach maybe, or just all kinds of doubts I feel like would start to creep up in this sport, especially kind of being new into it. For me, it was definitely, so at first it was a lot of motivation, like seeing um, people that have been in the sport for a while. It was super motivating for me. And then it got to the point where I was like, well, I don't look like them. And they're three weeks out and I'm three weeks out. Why don't I look like them? Um, but then I had to take a step back and realize that this is my first show. Not everyone goes out there their first show and looks a hundred percent. Um, which for me was really, I'm very competitive. So it was really hard for me to be like, yeah, let me step out there at about, you know, 70%. Um, because I like to give my hundred percent. So very excited for next show. Yeah. And when you first started training kind of more of a bodybuilding style was, was there any kind of differences that you initially felt versus training you know kind of the previous ways that you have um yes I actually liked it a lot more I felt stronger um I was in it I've been in and out of weightlifting um but probably for until I started bodybuilding training before that I wasn't really lifting weights um so I found or I refound my love for being in the gym and really just pushing myself super hard yeah it's uh you know, I think it, it takes so much um, dedication, you know, like you have to literally hit everything. Every rep has to be, you know, the way it should be. It's so much detail in this oh, sport. It- All right, guys, we're going to take a quick break here just for a second. Let me tell you about Smoking Gun Coffee. They're a veteran-owned coffee company that strives to produce a quality coffee at an affordable price. They only buy coffee from small coffee farmers around the world with a cup score of at least 85. Each batch is roasted to order for maximum freshness. They also donate a large portion of their proceeds to organizations that help local communities, veterans, first responders, or you can donate to the foundation of your choice at the checkout by going to www.smokinguncoffee.com. That's S-M-O-K-I-N, Gun Coffee. It sucked 100%. Um, Like it was great on my off days. I'm a nurse, so I work 12 hour shifts. But those days where I would have to do fasted cardio before work. So I'd have to get to the gym at like 4 a.m., do my fasted cardio, go work all day, and then go lift after, and then come home, go back to sleep, and do it all again the next day. That definitely tested me more than anything. Um, But I was really proud of myself, like that I made myself do it. Yeah. So. What do you think really, you know, a lot of people would say like time is the biggest reason they don't do something or they don't feel like doing it. You know, those two would easily, you know, come up in, I feel like in your schedule, you know, having different kind of work hours and and things like that. Like, what do you think helped you to just keep pushing even when, you know, you're tired or you don't feel like it or I'm hungry or whatever? 
Um, honestly, looking at my progress pictures, like looking at that first progress picture would always motivate me. Like if I was sitting there like, man, I don't feel like going to the gym. I don't want to do this. Like I could easily find every excuse in the book. Um, I would look at my progress picture and be like, no, like you're working for this. You're working hard. You're going to get on stage, go to the gym. Um, I actually, there was one time where I was, I don't even know. I was sick. I had worked. Um, I was in the middle of a lift and I just, I mean, it hit me like a, like a bus. I was like, I don't think I'm going to be able to finish this workout. And I remember I had an email Austin. I'm like, I, I didn't make it through my workout. Like, and it's, I don't like doing that. Um, and so I had to take, I think I took about a week and a half off. And luckily it was still at the beginning of my like body recomposition phase, not my prep. Right. Um, but even taking that week and a half off, I felt not like a failure, but just like very lazy. Even though I was sick, I still was like, I want to go get all this done. Like yeah. I should be doing that. Yeah. I mean, especially kind of like at the beginning when you're setting up those routines and that habit, you know, trying to build it, the consistency up. You can imagine how kind of challenging that would have been. Yes. Um, luckily, though, my, so I have two dogs. I'd moved back in with my parents. I 100% could not have done it without them. Um, because I mean, especially when we got deeper into prep, they were the ones definitely walking my dogs, uh, helping me with them, um, picking up that slack for me because my dogs were getting on my nerves. <laughs> so when you initially started your prep in you know, a little bit before it, you know, I'm sure your coach is probably, you know, kind of telling you what it's going to be like a little bit, maybe giving you a little bit of advice for what's to come. You know, how did, how did your thoughts about it going into it compared to the reality of what it was actually like? Um, my thoughts going into it, I thought it was going to be hard. I thought it was going to be difficult. Um, I did not realize how much I loved pop tarts until I could not have the pop tarts. (laughs) Um, reality of it is I feel like I could have made every, like I said, every excuse in the book to not do it. Um, so it was definitely I thought it was going to be more physically challenging, just being tired and um, working as much as I did. But it was way more mentally challenging for me than anything. Any tricks or anything like that you can, you know, a song that you can play to kind of put you in the zone or, you know, uh, maybe some people pray, maybe some people like make a list of what they have to do, whatever, like to kind of put you back into that, you know, mental zone of, you know, I'm here to get things done. I don't feel like doing it, but this thing that I'm about to do is going to help me. Do you have anything like that? Um, I made a checklist every day. Um, it just helped me be able to physically cross things off and be like, okay, I got this done. What's the next thing I have to do? That was probably the main thing for me is if I created a checklist every day, writing out what I needed to do when I needed to do it. Um, I'd set alarms on my phone for when I needed to eat to keep me on track with that. Um, that got me through prep. Gotcha. And what were some of those biggest challenges? You know, I'm sure there were certain circumstances or a life event that came up, something in your life that was outside of bodybuilding, or maybe it was inside of bodybuilding that just really made prep an extra layer of challenging. Um, anytime I'd oversleep my alarm, it happened twice. And I te- and it was like right before show too. Um, and I'd text Austin. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like I overslept. What do I need to do? And he was like, move your cardio to the evening. Like do this. I think it was like 75 minutes on the stairs. And I'm sitting there thinking that I have to do 75 minutes on the stairs. And then my other, like, I think I had 40, 45 minutes on the treadmill too. And thank goodness I was texting him about it. He was like, you know, you don't have to do the 45 minutes on the treadmill. It's like, okay. Cause I thought I was going to have to be here all night long. <laughs> Um, so that, and really work, I was trying to find the balance between working a 12 hour shift and still being able to do my fasted cardio and do my lift and then my cardio after, um, I found myself really trying to align my work schedule with my bodybuilding schedule more so than like trying to fit thing like bodybuilding into my schedule. My life revolved around bodybuilding, um, since last October. Yeah. And, you know, it's so weird because there's so many nurses out there that I've talked to that are in bodybuilding. And, you know, is, do you think it's just something about nursing or nurses like is makes people attracted to that kind of sport? 
I honestly, I don't know. Like I have a couple friends that I've met um, through bodybuilding that are nurses and I've talked to them and they were kind of my saving grace um, throughout this because I'd message them and be like, how do you do this? Like, is this really, is it supposed to be this hard or was it easier for you? Um, and so to know that other people were struggling with nursing and bodybuilding, like, and it's not easy, made me feel a lot better. Um, the hardest part though, was I would go to work or yeah, I would go to work or really any event and people would be like, Oh, you're eating that. Like you really can't order food with us or, Oh, why are you eating that? Like, what are you doing? And it was just like, not judgment, but it was just a lot of like, I don't want to say backhanded comments, but a lot of it was like, oh, well, don't get too muscular or, yeah. oh, don't do this. And I'm like, you guys don't even know anything about this. Um, yeah. So dealing with that was definitely a challenge as well. And then, you know, like I said, I'd set alarms on my phone. Everyone would be like, oh, Olivia has to go eat again. And I'm like shoving my food down my face and for like the 10 minutes that I have. Um, I've been in patients rooms before my alarm goes off and they're like what's your alarm for I'm like it's time for me to go eat but it's fine <laughs> just we'll finish up and then I'll go eat like <laughs> and so definitely trying to fit everything in and then you know work the atmosphere it wasn't negative um but like you know sometimes people's comments are negative whether or not they are trying to be negative um and so that I struggled with staying on track I actually had one of my best friends he uh I was gonna go just eat one m M&M. And we worked together, and he full on just like smacked it out of my head. <laughs> and he was like, "You are not allowed to eat that." And I was like, "I just wanted one." Um, so I definitely had support though yeah. when I needed it. That's cool. I actually had a uh, <clears throat> a guy on here who was a travel nurse, okay. and he kind of mentioned the same thing about you know f- he called it fit shaming. You know, yes. where, where people just kind of make comments like. You know, you're at a birthday party and you can't eat the cake and people say, you know, you know, are you too good to eat this or, or whatever? And not even being in bodybuilding myself, but even sometimes getting a little bit of, of that when I'm, you know, I'm not super strict on myself right now. But, you know, when I am, it's crazy how just taking care of yourself and wanting to like strive for a goal can make some people uncomfortable. Yes. Yeah, like even if someone's wanting to be what they see as healthy, um, everyone just looks at you like you're crazy. And now actually coming out of show and being in a reverse and having more food. Like last week, um, I did a bulk week. I was able to eat pop tarts every day. Great. It was amazing. I love flavor. Uh, Brown sugar cinnamon. Yeah, those are good. Do you warm them up? No. No. Do you ever warm up pop tarts? Sometimes I freeze them. That's different. I've never heard of that. Frozen pop tarts (laughs) are where it's at. See, Um, I've never heard of that. But, and everyone at work was like, oh my gosh, are you allowed to eat that? Why are you eating that? Oh my God, like freaking out. I mean, I looked at someone and I said, if one more person asks me if I'm allowed to eat something, like just mind your business. I was like, I'm so sick of everyone commenting on it. Um, but like you've trained them to think like th- that you eat certain foods and then you eat something else and then oh, they're freaking right. out about something else. Um, but you know, if I were to order food or like pick up McDonald's or something, no one would say anything about it. Yeah. Um, the best part, I remember I was at a social event for um one of the gyms I was working at, at the time I'm and uh I had my gallon of water in the bar with me and it I had just started prep so it or not even prep it was probably around a couple of months into me working um in that weight loss phase and I had my gallon of water and someone was talking about how I was going to do a show and I had someone look at me and go is that even healthy and my comment back cuz I was hangry was one well, is the drink in your hand even healthy? Yeah. Like <laughs> um, you're at a bar and you're questioning that. Right. I was like, really? You're questioning my decisions right now. Yeah. Um, but I've, over time I've learned to just kind of, you know, it is what it is. People aren't going to understand it. Um, and if you s- support me, then great. If not, oh, well, yeah, it's, it's definitely interesting. You know, the, the norms that we have in, in our society of like what you're supposed to do and, you just go outside that even sometimes a little bit and how much backlash you can get is oh, yeah. so bizarre. But yeah, it's it's definitely different. And and bodybuilding it it's it's also to me I've learned, you know, from the outside looking in, talking to people that it's really you're doing it, but it's also kind of a community of people around you that are helping you. You kinda of mentioned, you know, 
just taking care of your dogs, like people supporting you, people who are understanding if you do get a little snappy during prep or like whatever it is, it, it's really not just the, the athlete. It's the group of people around that is affected by that person doing it. Yes. Um, definitely. I felt so, I felt so bad for my parents and my brother that I was living back at home and measuring my food out. And I'm pro- not the best to be around when I'm hangry and I'm really not the best to be around when I'm tired and hangry. Um, but they were some troops. They, they were troopers and they supported me from the start. They never once questioned my decision. They were like, you know, if you're going to do it, go for it. Like they know me, I do everything all out. I don't just give it 50%. Um, so to have their support, I could not have done it without their support. Yeah. So your first show, that was in Atlanta, right? Yes, it was. So that's definitely, you know, being a first show and going kind of a good distance away, that kind of, I'm sure, added a little bit of another factor to it. Um. So my goal originally was to do the Derby show here in Louisville. Um, I was not ready for it. So my coach and I made the decision, hey, we're not going to do it. Um. And then I was with Built by Bedson at the time, and I know originally they had a group going to Atlanta. And so back when I thought I was still doing Derby, I was like, hey, let's do this show. Like, it sounds like it would be a fun time. Um, Let's just do back-to-back. So that was the plan. Well, then when we didn't, I didn't do Derby, I was like, hey, am I still doing the Atlanta one? So we, he's, Austin said yes, so we went for it. I was very nervous, but I actually was more excited to do the Atlanta show than I was about Derby because um, my best friend now, Savannah, and then my good friend, Melanie, like we both, they were both going to do the show in Atlanta. So I felt like I had more support there and, or at least backstage. And it was something like exciting to do with my friends and have their support and them see me my first time and then me be able to watch them compete as well. Yeah. And, you know, the, the experience of show day, you know, you get all ready and, you know, you're, waiting backstage and you know tell us a little bit about that really experience not just from the what happens side but you know the 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 thoughts you know going through your head the emotions you're experiencing well um I was no one warned me about the tan okay so (laughs) I I knew like everyone was like naked in these little tents but I didn't know, like, we would all just be, like, in the middle, like, hovered over a fan trying to dry. <laughs> so that just, like, threw me for a loop. It was just funny. It was like, oh, this is different. Like, was not expecting that. And then um, what is so funny, she asked me if I wanted my face tan. And I'm like, um, I don't know. Like, and so Savannah is in a tent across. And I'm, like, mouthing to her, like, do I want my face tan? She's like, huh, what? Like, <laughs> And so it was just funny. Um, was not expecting that at all. Um, and then, of course, the sweatpants I had on, like, had lint all over them. So when I took them off, I had, like, black fuzzies all over my legs. And then the tan lady's like, oh, this is not good. And so then I'm freaking out because I'm like, well, I don't know what you want me to do. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, And then the show day, I actually barely slept the night before because I was just so anxious and so nervous. Um show day I walked out to go on stage for the first time and I completely forgot my like whole presentation I started walking I was like uh well we're just winging this whole thing (laughs) (laughs) um but I competed in wellness and bikini um just to see which one I would be a better fit for um so luckily wellness was first which I'd learned that posing in two weeks so of course I walked up and I was like, oh crap, I just forgot this whole thing. Um, Laura's going to kill me out there. I know she's watching me and she's like, I did not produce Olivia. Like, you know, um, and then I feel like I redeemed myself in bikini. My posing was a little bit better, but definitely um, I was very anxious and I actually got off stage and was very mad at myself um, because I'm, you know, we are all we are all our own worst critic. Right. Um, and I got off stage. I remember Austin came up. He's like, you did great. And I was like, I did okay. It's like, just leave it at that. And he was like, okay, okay. Like no one knew what to like say or do. I was just really upset. Cause I was like, I know that I could have done better. Um, but I still had a lot of fun. Like, no, I didn't do my best. Um, but then I had to take a step back and realize like, it is my first show. Like I did good for it being my first show. And I had a lot of fun with it. Yeah. So, yeah, it's funny how many people do kind of say like they just forget, you know, like 
the blank of the lights and the people and the judges and the other competitors and everything just kind of sits on you and you just forget kind of what you've been doing. It's, it's, I think people can relate though. It's so familiar to like giving a speech in, in class or something, you know, you like try to remember the speech over either if you're a good student, I guess overnight or like over the last couple of nights right. or the person who just tries to memorize it before the, the speech, but like and you get up there and you just start doing something and a lot of times the the cool thing about that though is if you're confident in what you're doing, people like a lot of times don't even know that you're you don't know. Right. Um my friends said they couldn't tell, but what's funny, so my mom live streamed it, my family live streamed it from here, and I was talking to my mom about it later and she's like, "Well, I could tell because I'm your mother and I just know you and I saw it all over your face." She's like, "But I'm sure no one else could." I'm like, "Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, <yeah. laughs> Thanks, mom." I really appreciate that. Um but I definitely so yeah, I walked on stage and I was like, well, here goes nothing. And the best part was after, um, whenever we did the awards, the, um, man, I already forgot what the, the, I think it's an expediter. I already forgot what the backstage like helpers are yeah. called. Um, this podcast is sponsored by smoking gun coffee, a veteran owned coffee company that strives to give back to those in need. Don't forget to use code TWR10 for a 10% discount at checkout. But he was like, okay, top five, like, you guys are doing your routines again. And I looked at the girl behind me, and I was like, shit, I don't want to have to get up there and do that again. I was like, this is terrible. I said, like, can I be, like, six <laughs> so I don't have to do it? Yeah, it's it's so funny. Um, I remember kind of, like, a, a semi-similar experience of, like, being – you know, in sports and like the coach is like, you know, it's your turn to go in. And I'm like, I don't have any idea what I'm supposed to do out there. Please just don't put me in. <laughs> and it's like, right. you want to go because you want the experience and it's fun to do it. But like the, the pressure and like not wanting to make, you know, yourself look bad or all right. these different things are running through your head. Like, and in the moment you're just thinking, mm, I don't know if yep. it's worth it. I, know. <laughs> I don't know. I actually compared it, um, looking back on it, I compare it to when I was running cross country in high school and my coach was like, Hey, you're running varsity. And I was like, can, can I just run JV? Like, <laughs> are you sure about that? Um, but you know, it's okay. It happens. Yeah. And you know, I'm sure that experience, a lot of people have it one and two, it's just like a, a learning experience and an experience where it's like, if, cause if you have a negative or a, semi-negative experience because like like we're talking about most people probably don't even know you understand like this is probably one of the worst things that could happen and i'm fine right and next time you step on it's like even if that same thing happens i know that i got through it right so it takes off so much pressure and i'm like you know i didn't fall didn't trip over (laughs) myself so we at least have that going for me (laughs) right so after the show you know tell us a little bit about what you did you know what What's the thing that you were craving? You know, what what was that next day like? You know, getting getting out of bed and having a little bit of a different of a routine, like Um, that next day well, so right after the show, um, we went and got Mexican. Um I definitely drank a nice big thirty two mm-hmm. ounce margarita. Um, definitely had a bunch of drinks that night. Totally regretted it the next morning. I felt like crap and had to drive home from Atlanta. <laughs> um but it was definitely fun it was great it uh my best friend he was able to go um and then I have a couple friends in Atlanta that were able to watch and so it was I had a lot of people there for support and to hang out with and have fun with after and um Savannah also competed and she actually won the overall title for figure there and so we were just super pumped and just ready to have fun so the next day though I I got cookies from my cookie dealer and those are like a thousand calorie cookies and I, I ate like six of them, but so it definitely took like a week to kind of get back on track for me, right? Um, which I knew was going to happen. Um, but yeah, I definitely like ate my body weight and probably sugar and junk. And any like reactions, any, I mean, just like crazy headaches or, I mean, obviously from the drinking, but like, right. When you're when you're used to eating so clean, and then you go like doing the complete opposite, like like twenty four hours of just nonstop doing it, basically, like I'm sure your body was. Uh, my body was over it. Yeah, it's like what are you doing? Like I remember I got home and I laid on the couch, and my mom was like, "What is wrong with you?" It's like 
I don't feel good at all. <laughs> like I need to get back on my meal plan now. <laughs> like this is terrible. Yeah. It's, it's weird though, because you know, that's not necessarily to that extent, but how people typically do eat is maybe to some extent like that. And they have, you know, no, you, you know, their body just reacts to it with nothing. It's like, that's what they're used to. And, um, you know, you put a vegetable in somebody and they have, you know, their stomach can't handle it. It's so weird how our bodies can adapt to like yes. either really, you know, good, really bad, or, you know, in the middle and you throw it off just a little bit and how it can just be chaos sometimes. It was definitely chaos, <laughs> definitely chaos. Um, uh, probably that first week I was trying to stay on my meal plan. Um, I came off of it a little bit, but I still try to stay somewhat decent. I wasn't like binging food. That was my biggest fear. Um, because before bodybuilding, I actually had a binge eating disorder. It was undiagnosed. I diagnosed myself with it. Um, and I also closet eat too. So my biggest thing coming out of show was I did not want to binge eat and I didn't want to start closet eating again. Um, and I made it through the first week of not doing that besides like 48 hours post-show. Um, and I was really proud of myself with that. Um, my biggest issue too is the scale. I've always hated the scale. I've had this crazy obsession with the scale. Um, even knowing that the scale number doesn't always mean anything. Um, so I've had to, when I watched that go up, I was like, this isn't happening. Like I kind of had to reset and find a different mindset of like, Hey, like you still look good. You're reversing out of this. Um, and it's, it's gotten a lot better. The bulk last week, um, that my new coach put me through, I did not complain about it. I did tell him, I was like, Ooh, are you sure you want to do this? And he was like, just trust me. So I did the bulk and now we're going into an eight week cut. So gotcha. So I think we talked about it a little bit before, um, not on the podcast, but a little bit before that your next shows were going to be in the spring, next spring. That's the goal. Um, we're going to kind of see how my body reacts in this eight week cut and kind of get back to a maintenance weight for me and hopefully be ready for spring. Um, we're not for sure what shows or anything yet, um, but spring is definitely the goal. Gotcha. So. And, you know, what do you think you've learned kind of the most throughout this this first season? Um, I've learned that I can do a lot more than I think I can. Um, and that I'm definitely, like, when I think I've pushed my body to the limit, like, there's still probably another, like, 100% I could go. Um, so I'm definitely learning how to keep pushing myself um, and still, honestly, making time for me as well. Still, um, my mom was like, Oh, well you go to the gym. Like that's your, you time. And I'm like, I mean, yeah, I'm choosing to do this, but like, I need something like outside of that. So just kind of learning to be able to manage all my time. Like I had to have it structured throughout prep. Um, so I could get everything in and I still am trying to keep everything structured so I can get everything in. Yeah. I feel the, you know, the same sentiment about that ninth round at nine round of, <laughs> Once you hit those uh, butterflies or whatever. Right, or that three-minute oh, plank. Yeah, that yeah. was the worst. No, it was terrible. Was like, but I just knew I could keep going. Like, it's three minutes. You can yeah. do a plank for three minutes. And the people who would go back around. Oh, I used to be crazy one of those people. people. Crazy. You're insane. Yeah, I am. Can't Never imagine. said I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I learned that probably making it 30 minutes into the stairs out of my hour, if I can make it to 30, I was home. Like, I was good after that. It was like, with that first 30 killed me every single time and same with any of like the lifting that I was doing it was always like the beginning I was good it was when I'd work 12 hours had like two more exercises of like three or four sets and I just wanted to go home that I had to keep pushing through and um but it definitely I definitely learned like how to keep pushing and that I am able to keep pushing and my mind definitely quits before my body does yeah and I kind of have a similar experience on the Peloton, actually. And I was I was curious to ask somebody this. Would, are you more motivated whenever you see the timer going up or the timer going in reverse? I don't know. Like, I, when I, whenever I did my cardio, it was always the timer going up. Um, I could have switched it to going down. But, like, I, 
I always like trick my brain. I'm like, okay, 60 minutes. That's like six, 10 minute intervals. And then I'm five minutes into this first 10 minute interval. So seeing it go up, I like break it down more. So yeah. it would be going up and I would be counting it down. Yeah. Um, but I also like watching it count down. Cause I'm like, okay, like 30 seconds. Like I can do this for 30 more seconds. Um, so I, it just really depends. Yeah. Now I'm gonna have to try like switching the timer. See, personally, I always felt like counting down was just like so much faster. I don't, I don't know why. You know, you get to that 30 minute mark and it should be the same, but like, I just feel I have so much yet to do instead of I've co- I've accomplished so much. It's, yeah. It's so weird psychologically. No, it definitely is. I'd look at it and I'm like, oh, I'm only two minutes into cardio. <laughs> like, yay. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it's interesting what our brains though can uh, can make us do if we're willing to to really just kind of stick to the plan and stay yes. disciplined. Um, kind of along those lines though, whenever you you get out of and you kind of touched on it a little bit, but whenever you get out of a a prep and you're going to kind of an off season, you're building and things like that, you know, how do you stay with this much time kind of in between? How do you stay really locked in um so I'm still learning that um because part of me is like oh I don't have a show for like another year like I could slack off a little bit if I wanted to um but I did uh switch coaches and my new coach is CJ Camacho and he is one of my best friends fiancés um and he I mean he makes it to where he just incorporated track workouts every week to kind of switch it up so Last week we went to Wagner's track and made me sprint and I died and I hated every minute of it, but I also loved it at the same time. Um, and we try to work out together once or twice a week. Um, so that definitely has kept me motivated and just kind of like the end goal. I have to like sit back and remind myself like, Hey, if you want to get on stage in a year and you want to kill it and bring a better package than you did this first show, like you have to stay locked in. Like you don't have time to slack Go do your cardio. Don't skip your lifts. Stay on your meal plan. Like, it will pay off. Um, So I'm kind of just taking that day by day because I'm not motivated every day. And I wasn't during prep, but it was more like, oh, the finish line's almost there. Yeah. Um, whereas now I'm like, the finish line is so far away. Right. But we also have a lot of work to do. Um, I'm, we still don't know if I am bikini or wellness. So we're kind of playing with both of those. Um, and so I have to stay on top of my game so we can figure out which one's the best fit. Is there one you feel more comfortable in? Um, you know, I like wellness posing a little bit more. But with my whole forgetting my wellness routine, um, I – was more confident in my bikini presentation at my show. Um, but I still, I don't know yet. So we'll see. I just kind of want to go wherever I think I could do better and excel better. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. An interesting aspect, I think, to like the divisions and I recently kind of really learned this is you have to kind of match your personality too to each. You know, I never thought about that, especially I think from a female perspective where it's more, I want to say more personality, but like it, it's definitely incorporated. It yes. feels like more into the, um, the overall package. Yes, it definitely is. Like I felt, again, I was more confident in bikini posing cause that's what I'd started with. I learned wellness posing in two weeks, um, wasn't fully confident in it. So I felt like my personality came out more in bikini, but I mean, I could do bikini posing in my sleep. Um, I didn't forget that going on stage. <laughs> Um, so I'm still, and I'm still perfecting how to put my personality into my presentation. And I think that was the biggest thing for me. I mean, Laura, my posing coach, she looked at me multiple times and she's like, Olivia, can you just relax? Like, you look like you're about to fight someone. Like, please just like relax. You can tell the, um, the gears turning on your face. Yes. Yeah, she's like, how did you used to dance? Like, this makes no <laughs> sense. <laughs> It's do, is it does it feel like once you finally get the routine down it is kind of like a dance in a way? Um yes I do. Um I feel like it's definitely like I remember in dance team like the facial expressions, like the flow of everything. Um it was bringing your personality into the dance. Um and so once I got the routine or presentation down and the poses and I was able to incorporate my personality, I felt more comfortable with it. Um But for me, too, I actually hated posing in the beginning because 
I was still like trying, I was in a major weight loss phase. Um, so for me at my biggest, like to start posing, I absolutely hated it. I did not want to pose. And, um, I remember Laura telling me, she's like, Olivia, the posing's going to come. Like, I need you to still practice this, whether you hate it or not. Cause if you don't practice it now, like you're putting yourself behind. Um, so I had to, I, I was posing and I like wouldn't even record it or put it, um, like, put myself in front of a mirror doing it I would just do it um and then as I got leaner I got more confident in it as well um so that was definitely a big struggle with me for posing yeah it's it's such a weird kind of thing to do initially it feels like is to um you know for some people maybe not because they're like you know have that more um showman kind of thing but you know, I feel like even I would have like this weirdness about getting in front of a mirror and, and doing that kind of thing. It's just, it's not like wrong, but it's just, it would feel weird to me. It's just some kind of, uh, I think too, in a way it's like showing a little bit yourself like, Hey, this is my strong points. These are my weak points. So it's kind of revealing as well. Right. Um, and I remember one of my friends telling me, she's like, you need to get out there in your posing suit in the middle of the gym and start posing. And I'm like, <laughs> um, do I have to like, um, so definitely becoming like more confident in myself helped with me practicing posing. It was definitely weird in front of a mirror. Um, but the more I did it and the more confident I got, the better it is. So. And is that, uh, you know, is the posing something that you feel like is maybe it's kind of new to you still, but is evolving as far as like, you know, how the posing is being done, you know, even just a few years back versus maybe, you know, this year, next year and the years ahead. Um, so I know, uh, I've been told that like there are old wellness poses or old bikini poses. I don't know too much about them. Um, I also was one to think that, Oh, I can just watch some YouTube videos and teach myself how to pose. I learned that was not the case. Right. Um, so I'm very interested to see how it evolves um, over the next few years and to see how the posing changes. I'm also interested to see how my routine is or my presentation is like the next time I'm on stage versus this first time I was on. Yeah. That's so be pretty interesting for sure. I'm definitely interested to see like the confidence and the faces and yeah. just how, uh, how it flows. Yeah. No, I think that's a, uh, that's an interesting, interesting point is like the flow of it. I feel like when somebody really has that down and and they maybe have a few shows under the belt and things like that, it's really kind of cool to watch how it does like flow into, you know, one pose into the next, but also just like even walking out and and things like that. It's just, it really is. And and thinking about it, it kind of really is like a dance and how it just is one move to the next. Yeah. My walk sucked for the longest time. I remember Laura, she was like, Olivia, you look like you're like up to something like you look like you're being mischievous or something like because she would just make me walk laps in their basement um for my posing lessons sometimes because she's like I I don't get why you look like so awkward (laughs) um so definitely I was actually making myself like wear my heels around the house and everything um trying to get that walk down that was the bit honestly that was the hardest part yeah uh, another interesting aspect to bodybuilding and, and really thinking about it, talking to, to a few people here recently about it, the money, you know, the, the financial commitment of doing bodybuilding is, is more than just, you know, paying for the show. You know, it's you yeah. the, obviously the training, you got the coach, you have the meals, you have, you know, the suit, you have every, uh, everything that goes along with, you know, being on stage, you know, when you first got into it, were you, were you understanding of that kind of? No, not at all. Um, I mean, I knew it was going to be expensive. I did not know how expensive, like it was really going to be. Um, cause I, I feel like I was just not even blowing money, but like the new corner would turn. I'm like, Oh, I, I have to pay this for the show or I need to do this. Um, I do say, I do think going into my next show to be a little bit less expensive because I do have a suit. Um, I have my heels now. I have my jewelry. Um, so it was kind of like those first show things, like getting everything together. Um, but yes, no, like there's the hair, the makeup, um, the suit, which 
I've never spent that much on a bikini that I cannot swim in. <laughs> like, um, was not expecting that. And, um, or I wasn't expecting it to be that much. Um, the coach that's expensive. Um, it definitely is probably the most expensive sport I've ever, um, decided to do. Yeah. And it's a sport where there's really a little financial gain in the sport itself. And you could obviously become sponsored and things like that. But like most people are doing this sport and they're out there just, you know, doing it because they love it and and making the sacrifices because they love it. Yes. Um, I definitely am going to have to budget for this next one um, because I'm in the process of trying to get a house too now. Um, And my mom the other day, she was like, so, you know, like if it comes down between a house payment and bodybuilding, please tell me you're going to choose the house payment. And I was joking. I was like, well, I don't know about that, mom. <laughs> so i um, definitely going to be a little bit more aware of the finances, too, for my next show that I kind of play in a role uh, yeah. when my next one in, is as well. And did you have to, you know, really think about, you know, hey, what – supplements are absolutely crucial. What food can I, you know, how can I do this in a better, you know, more financial way? Um, anything like that? Um, I actually, like, I did not ever really question the supplements or anything. Like if Austin told me to get something, I'm like, okay, like I'll go get it. I made it work. Um, even if it was like a couple days after I'd be like, Hey, like couldn't get it until payday, but I got it. Um, food wise, I started buying, Like I would go to Aldi because it's a little bit cheaper Um, or even at Kroger. Like I would go to their like sale stuff. And if it was like chicken that needed to be cooked within a couple days, like I'd cook it and then freeze it. So trying to find like the cheaper options as well was definitely something. Yeah, it's it is crazy. Um, Just kind of thinking about, like I said, all the the money that isn't in pushed into the fitness industry, whether it's supplements or, um, you know, suit buying, really, there's so many things you could talk about, but because of the sport, you know, you take this sport out of fitness and even just like historically fitness would look so much different. You know, you take Arnold right out of fitness. How many people got into bodybuilding because of Arnold Schwarzenegger, even just fitness, right. you know, I'm one of them. So it's like, this sport has played such a big influence into fitness and, you know, how people train, what they believe is, you know, healthy or unhealthy, what, you know, what they think they should eat. So it's just, you know, it is such a, uh, an influence. And now you're seeing it become, I think, you know, getting closer to the sport, obviously it makes it feel like it's a bigger influence, but it just feels like it's a bigger influence nowadays. You know, more people are competing. Um, when I was a kid, it just felt like it really wasn't, for people it was you know just for like these like right crazy big dudes you know or, or you know super genetic freaks and now it just seems like everybody kind of has a spot in this sport yes um i well i actually was really nervous about the community like of the sport um i didn't think like it would be as welcoming as it is um i've made a lot of good friends through this community um and everyone that i've like reached out to or have reached out to me definitely like it's all been very helpful and positive. Um, and I would have never expected that. It's getting to talk to different people. It's crazy how willing people are to talk about their experience and how bodybuilding has, you know, saved their lives or has helped them get, uh, get away from an addiction or, you know, whatever it is, a relationship or something like, you know, and it's not necessarily just because it's bodybuilding, but, but it is bodybuilding that's doing a big portion of, of it because, you know, people like me, like, you know, growing up, okay, I love football, I love basketball, I love baseball. Once you get past high school, like, or even to high school, you know, you're not going to be right. a professional high school or a professional <laughs> basketball player, you know, but the cool thing about bodybuilding is like, you could get into the sport when you're 38 or 29 or whatever. And you can, you know, legitimately have a shot at being successful. You know, it's just a matter of determination and, you know, sticking to the plan for long enough. Right. Um, yeah. I, sports have always been a thing for me. And so that first year out of high school, not playing a sport, I was like, I don't know what to do with my life. Like, um, so really ever since high school, like I said, I was in and out of the gym trying to find something um, that like I belonged to. 
Um, and so bodybuilding def like, again, I was not expecting to love it. I was kind of going with it being like, Oh, I'm just going to do a show. Like, you know, and now I'm like full on, like, let's stay with it. Like, let's go kill it. Like I want to get as successful as I can be with this. Um, so I'm definitely excited to keep it, keep up with it and keep doing it. Yeah. And you know, not just bodybuilding, like, the sport of it or the competition side of it, but there's so many avenues to go down, you know, once you, cause you, you know, you, you meet the people, you get the connections, you, you know, maybe you're successful and you, you start to, you know, coach yourself and you start to be, you know, whatever kind of route that there is out there. There's so many that, that lead through bodybuilding. Yes. I'm excited to see if there's like any other routes that like, or connections I make that can take me in any other routes. I'm not really sure what other um, routes I would take, but I'm kind of curious just to see like what comes along with it. Yeah. Well, it's interesting, you know, because anything in life is going to, if you start down and it, it's going to take you somewhere that you have no idea. You I know? know. First time I hit record, didn't have a, didn't have a, a headset, didn't have a microphone, just hit record on the Mac and Two, a little over two years ago, I never thought there would be, you know, people here in this, you know, studio with, you know, the, the camera and the microphone. And, like, it's just, if you, I think the cool thing about life is if you just stick to something, it'll take you places that are, you know, unknown at the beginning, but pretty cool places to go. Yeah. Um, bodybuilding, I want to say the sport. Like, yes, I love the sport of it, but definitely mentally, it, like, it really helped me. Um, it help drag me out of a really dark place that I was in. Um, cause again, I didn't like myself. I was trying to find my way. Like I was in nursing school, which nursing school is its own beast. Um, there was just a lot of outside stressors and I had stopped going to the gym. I had stopped really caring about what I eat. Um, and so I finally just was like, I've had enough of this, like, let's turn this around. And so finding bodybuilding, um, helped me out of that. And so it was very positive for me, um, regardless of the fact that like I am in the sport, like I, I don't want to ever, um, probably I don't ever want to like give up the gym again. Like that 100% was like, that's always been something that like how I, um, deal with my anxiety or stress or anything. I always have been in the gym. Like I remember nursing school, I would go, walk on the treadmill or run on the treadmill for like excessive amounts of time. Probably not the healthiest thing to do, but that was like the only way that I could de-stress from school. So, I mean, I would study on the treadmill. Like I'd have my books out. I'd have my headphones in listening to lecture, just walking because it was like the only way that I could like somehow retain that information. Yeah. It's cool to see and hear how people, you know, really use the gym and whether it's the gym or, or any other kind of like activity as a therapy, you know, I think because of kind of the life style of today, you know, with more sedentary jobs and things, people are losing out on, um, natural kind of therapy, natural stress relief and returning towards whether it be, you know, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with therapy, but like sit down therapy or medication or drinking or drugs, right. like we're not utilizing the, our body, you know, for ourselves. Um, right before I started bodybuilding, I actually, I was on, um, a lot of anxiety medicine for anxiety. And, um, I came off all of that right before I started bodybuilding, just cause I was like this medicine. Yes, it was working, but I hated how I felt on it. Um, and I kept gaining weight on it too, which of course all, there were all the factors, but that was somewhat of it. And I was like, you know, I just want to come off all of this and just see what happens. Um, and so getting back into the gym and eating healthy again and being on a plan actually helped a ton. And I have been fine ever since. Yeah. I think part of it is the physical uh, uh, activity of it and also just having a goal, you know? Yes. Having a goal and like seeing yourself get closer towards it, you know, the confidence, the self-empowerment, all that stuff is just like, it translates into every other aspect of your life. You know, your job, your relationships, everything. It's just... um and it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't have to be bodybuilding. Just choose something to where you have a goal at the end of the day and every day you're doing, doing something to kind of work towards it. Yes. And that's kind of why I had the checklist too. Like that checklist, like my goal for the day was to check everything off that list. Um, and 
it was great when I did. Um, and I mean, during prep, I had to, like, I didn't have a choice. Like if I didn't want to drink a gallon of water, sorry, like you got to do it anyway. Um, but even like now that I'm not in prep, I still make a check, a checklist because that's just kind of how I stay organized. And that's how, cause I get like super overwhelmed if I have a bunch of stuff and I'm like, how am I going to get all this done? So I have to like write it down and just check it off as I go. Yeah. Uh, I was doing that for a while and it really does. Like it doesn't just help you figure out what you got to do, but it just brings you like that peace of mind at the end of the day, knowing like you don't sit there thinking, Oh, did I forget something or, Oh, I should have done this. And so like, it is kind of like a, a helps you yes. at least to help me kind of like sleep easier. Knowing I kind of yes. got what I needed to do done. I remember. So during prep, one of my friends who competes as well that I met her through bodybuilding, um, after I had binged like five pop tarts, I think, um, and, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was great. I mean, not really. I regretted it afterwards, but during, I was like, oh, let me just binge these Pop-Tarts. Um, it was right before we had decided to not do the Derby show. So we were still like, mm, I don't know if we're going to do it. Maybe, maybe not. Um, but I had binged Pop-Tarts and I remember I was so upset and I had told her about it. And so she had been using a checklist to stay on track with her prep. And so we share, she shared it with me in Google Docs, I think. And we would send messages to each other, like, back and forth. And so, like, you wouldn't even see it until you go to, like, check off, like, meal one, meal two. Like, did you hit your step goal? Did you hit your uh, water intake? And she'd always, like, write at the bottom, like, you're doing great. You're killing it. Like, and so just, like, those little things, too, seeing that um, was also very motivating. Like, besides checking it off, but, like, she cared. Like, she's like, oh, hey, like, you got this. And, like, I know she was having a hard time um staying on her stuff and so I'd always mess her and be like you got this like one meal down like we can yeah, do this so cool. you know having somebody there it, it really does make a difference you talk about the supportive community but um I remember this is kind of a, a little bit different but in the same light you know doing doing a marathon and I was you know you just see the people line up on the side and I said it right after the show and, and it's still true and it's Having those people there, like, I couldn't have done it without them. It sounds, like, so corny, so cheesy, but, like, the people in your, the people that you surround yourself with, whether it's, you know, along the training or, or, you know, the day of the event, whatever it is, like, make sure you are surrounding yourself, I think, with good people. I think that makes the the world of difference in whatever you want to do. No, it 100% does. Like, I remember um, my cardio buddies through prep were Melanie and Savannah, and um, they're, like, if they weren't up doing it, they were at least waking up, like, texting. Like, we were had a little group chat, and we'd be like, hey, you doing cardio? Like, you got this. Um, so definitely just kind of, like, staying on track with friends is also helpful because um, no one wants to get up at, like, 3 or 4 in the morning and go do, like, an hour of uh, cardio and then go to work. Yeah. Um, but it was nice, like, because we all kind of just – made it work and we did it together no it wasn't every day um but like when we could meet up to do cardio together we'd meet up and do cardio yeah yeah having that little community there definitely is and I remember kind of getting into fitness myself having you know a a gym partner something like that is just yeah so helpful to and we kind of did the same thing you know early morning we would we'd work out early in the mornings before class and stuff and it was you know whether it was raining whether it was not raining whatever snowing cold hot you know you just you did it and you had that other person there for the accountability and it, it makes the world of difference for sure. But, uh, yes, it does. What do you think is the thing that you need to do to kind of bring yourself up? You kind of mentioned I stepped on the stage at 70%. What do you have to do to kind of step on the stage and feel good? I'm at a hundred percent. Um, definitely not feel, I don't want to feel behind and feel rushed. Um, I feel like that going into our, my first show, it was really hard for us to determine like, you know, when how my body was going to respond especially being in a deficit for so long um because my body kind of stopped responding there at the end which mentally sucked for me because I'm like oh like I should still be dropping weight and I was just stagnant um but then I also realized that like even though my weight wasn't dropping I was still leaning out um but probably for this next show um it kind of depends if I'm doing wellness or bikini um for Wellness, I definitely have to grow my lower body. Um, So if we end up deciding to go wellness, it may be a little bit longer before I get on stage just because I want to come out what I think is my best or better than me coming out on my first show. Um, I want to come out 
better. My next goal is to qualify for nationals. Um, so we'll see, but definitely probably nailing the posing and just kind of coming in like at my leanest. Yeah. And <clears throat> you've talked on this podcast about how bodybuilding really has influenced, uh, major changes within your life. And I think a lot of people have, you know, they, especially with social media, they see people doing bodybuilding more. They see, uh, maybe how it has changed their life and all kind of some of the positives of it, but they still maybe have some fear. They maybe still have some reservations about bodybuilding. You know, they want to maybe make a change within their life and, and maybe they think, okay, these people are doing it over here with bodybuilding, but, you know, I've heard these bad things about it. You know, what would your advice be for, you know, uh, especially a woman, kind of a young woman who wants to make that life change and maybe bodybuilding, you know, use bodybuilding as, as the way, but, you know, they're just facing a little bit of uncertainty about it. Um, My advice is to just go for it. I was very uncertain about it. Um, Like I kind of told you, like my brother's friend's dad, he's been on me for three years to do it. And I was always like, no, nah, I'm good. No, nah, I'm not going to do it. Um, I say just go for it. Definitely get a coach because I could not have done it without a coach. I suck at holding myself accountable. Um, so just finding that accountability, even if it's not a coach, like if you're just wanting to make a lifestyle change, like find someone that can hold you accountable. Um, when you are unable to hold yourself accountable, whether that's like a good friend that you're like, Hey, I'm going to text you every morning. I'm going to go lift like at this time every day. Make sure I do it or like just be like, hey, like you up or things like that. Um, And just honestly, like I was scared as hell to do it. Um, Didn't really. I mean, I was worried from day one. I was like, oh, this is going to suck. Like going into this deficit's going to suck. Do I really want to step on stage? We'll see. Um, But just go for it. And you'll kind of find your way and figure it out along the road. Yeah. I think that's a good advice, you know, for life in general. Just go for it, you know. Make, yes. Set set some kind of plan. It, it, it's, uh, you know, there's so many people who just kind of live day to day and they wake up, go to work, come home, eat dinner, maybe watch a few hours of TV, and they don't have any anything driving them. They don't have a goal. They don't have a passion. Um, and just do something, you know, like bodybuilding, maybe if the person tries it, it's not for them, but they, they might get a little motivated on it and they might find out, Hey, this other thing is for me. Right. Um, and you know, I feel like a lot of people are scared of failure. Um, did I win my first show? No. Did I expect to win it? No. Um, I could consider it a failure because I didn't win, but, to me, like if I didn't step on that stage and I gave up on myself, that would have been me failing. Um, so I've kind of like readjusted that failure mindset in my head. Um, cause I don't like to fail and that has been, that drives me, um, especially to stay with it. Like I want to beat myself and be my best version of myself, whether that's in bodybuilding or day to day life. Um, just always getting better. And so my biggest competition is myself. Um, and as long as I'm trying, I'm not failing. Yeah. I think a lot of people get stuck too <clears throat> with social media, the fear of starting and the fear of like, you know, they, they don't want to be the best version of themselves. They just want to like be the best version out there. Yes. You know, and it's just a, it's not probably realistic for most people to be that, um, you know, they also have, you know, crazy editing on photos and things right. like that's doing you know, some damage or whatever you want to call it, you know, negative, negative, um, things towards people. Um, there's just so many factors of being like not willing to start because like you said, people don't want to be the best version themselves. Instead, they just want to you know, jump all the hoops and just be the mm-hmm. best and all those, you know, win or, or get the followers or instead of just going through the process, enjoying the process, you know, learning about themselves, developing, uh, mentally and physically and just, you know, enjoying the ride, I think. I've had a lot of people ask me, they're like, oh, do you care if I see your, like, progress pictures, like, you know, from your start versus, like, right before show? And I will gladly show anyone because 
I don't want anyone to think like, oh, this came easy. Like, cause I put in a lot of work. Like I said, I've dropped like 65 pounds. Um, and so I will gladly, and even on my social media, like I always put my, or I think my progress pictures are still up. Like my very first one is still up. Um, just cause I want people to see like, Hey, like anyone can do this. If you have the mindset and the drive to do it, like you can become the best version of yourself. And I mean, I'm still working on it every day. Yeah. It's a, it's an, it's a battle, you know, mentally it's a battle. You know, you, you, you face doubts every day. It doesn't matter how long you've been doing it. You know, that's what I've learned from talking to people who've been bodybuilding or powerlifting or just in the world of fitness for decades. You know, even they face those doubts, even they face the, you know, should I switch up the program? Should I, uh, like just any kind of doubt you can imagine. And so, so it's not a quick fix. It's not a, once I hit this goal, I'm going to be set for life. You know, it's every day is a constant battle. Right. Um, I actually wanted to pull out of my first show about a month out because yes, I mean, I was looking great. Like I lost a ton of weight. Um, but I started to doubt myself and I was like, I don't really think I'm stage ready. Like, I don't think I'm stage lean. Um, when in reality I should have been like, Hey, I've made it this far. Like you should be freaking proud of yourself. Like stop getting in your head, go do it. Like you work this hard regardless of what happens on stage. Um, so yeah, like I doubted myself a ton throughout this process and I'm sure I will continue to at certain points throughout, uh, the journey. Yeah. And yeah, like I said, it's everybody. It's the person with a million, you know, followers on, on Instagram. It's the person that you look up to. It's, it's everybody that looks in the mirror or has a thought of, you know, am I worthy of it or should I keep going or, or all these different, you know, self, uh, self doubts. Everybody, everybody faces them. It's just, I think a, a matter of like being authentic with yourself. And then, you know, if you're, if you're somebody who does want to, um, influence people on social media, you know, be authentic with them as well. Like you said, you keep your, uh, you keep your progress picture up because it, it does show people like, Hey, no matter where you're starting, you know, no matter if you're a nurse, you know, have a busy schedule, no matter what is going on in your life, you know, you can make the dedication, make the time, make the sacrifice and, you know, achieve what you want to achieve. You know, and a lot of people I think also want to make excuses. Um, on why they can't do something or why, or to validate like them not going to the gym or them not being able to do something for themselves. Um, and that, it drives me insane. Um, like if you really want something and you really want to do something, you're going to go for it and you're going to make sure that it happens. Um, I mean, that was me for nursing school. I've, I had to reapply for nursing school about three times, I think maybe four. Um, But the end goal was, I'm going to be a nurse, and I'm going to do what I have to do to get it done. So, and I could have made every excuse to not finish um, my degree. I actually have my LPN right now. Um, That was kind of like just part of the journey. And so, I mean, I've caught myself finding every excuse in the book to not go back for my RN. And um, my mom, the other day, she was like, you're finding excuses. She's like, you, like, you want to do something? Go do it. Like, you're not allowed to give up. Um, So... Not going to let myself give up in that either. Yeah. Yeah. The human brain is so good at rationalizing, whether it's like the alarm goes off and, you know, we're, we're sleepy, you know, oh, I need this just maybe 30 more minutes. My body needs it. Or, you know, I can't go to the gym right now. I need to just, you know, I'm, I'm a little hungry and I go after and reality, right. you know, you're hungry and you eat and you sit on the couch and you fall asleep or something or, yep. you know, whatever it is like. Don't, you know, sometimes I think turning your brain off is the most powerful thing you can do, you know, just autopilot. Yes, no, I agree. Um, And definitely just holding yourself accountable. um, That's probably a huge thing, too. Yeah. Yeah. That checklist, I think, helps do that. Yes. Holding yourself accountable because you can see, you know, what you have and haven't done. It's not just like floating out there you know it's it's real it's on paper or whatever it's something that you can see the check mark you can see the the line through it saying you got it done or you don't see it you know it's like man and I think that's one thing too we we've kind of gotten away from being tough on ourselves in a lot of ways it's like you know we've turned self-love and self-care into just like giving ourselves a way out yes I do agree with that I feel like everyone's like oh well if I'm too hard on myself, like that's just me being mean to myself and beating myself up. And 
Um, I mean, if I was not hard on myself, I would not make it through school. I would not have made it through prep. Um, but I still had self love for myself and yeah. still was understanding at some points, but I cut the excuses and just got it done. Yeah. That's it. I think, I think that's the, a great place to end the podcast, you know, just cut the excuses, uh, set a goal and, you know, stay on track, stay on it, stay disciplined. And, uh, you're going to be amazed, you know, at what you can actually achieve in this life. And, you know, everyone's timeline is different. I think society puts a lot of pressure on everyone. Like, Hey, like you have to go to college right after high school or, and you have to be graduated in four years and all these different, um, norms, and this pressure on people. And I think that's what holds a lot of people back too. is like being afraid, like, Oh, I'm not going to fit this timeline that society has created. Um, I mean, it took me five years to get my LPN essentially when it should have taken me one. Uh, I was in school for my RN stuff happened, had to drop down, get my LPN. Um, and I'm going to go back for my RN. So, I mean, that's going to, if I count my time off, that's probably going to be like, six years for me to get my um registered nurse license so and that's not like a timeline that's yeah, not your typical that's not your typical timeline um same with bodybuilding like some people need more time than others or like any anything in your life I feel like everyone puts pressure on this timeline versus like just trusting the process regardless of what it is and trusting yourself to get it done yeah 100 percent. you know yeah Everybody starts somewhere different. Yes. You know, it's it's not, you know, we don't all have the same uh, starting point. We don't, we don't all have the same genetics. We don't, don't all have the same anything. You know, you, it really is, um, it really is in every single aspect of your life, you know, your own journey. And, uh, you know, I think that's, that's just a really, you know, good place to end it is just, you know, have the self-love enough to be hard on yourself, but set the goal and, and you know, get it done. Heck yeah, I got to get it done somehow. That's awesome. Well, really appreciate you coming on here. It was good to get to sit down after, you know, all these years <laughs> after uh, after getting trained. You know, well, thanks for having me on. Ex-trainer, right. nine rounds trainer. Used to, used to kill you in the yeah. hand pad work. Oh, gosh, my hand still hurts. <laughs> <laughs> but, you yeah, know, thanks for having me on and talking to me. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, absolutely. It's good to talk to you. And uh, if people want to, you know, catch you on social media, where can they do that? Um, My Instagram is just, I think it's at Olivia underscore Hummel. Um, and then Facebook is just Olivia Hummel. Awesome. Yeah. Well, that'll be down in the description. And uh, once again, thanks for coming on. It was really good to talk. Awesome. Thank you.